Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plain Obsessed, and today we're going to take a look in on the Red Wigglers and the European Nightcrawler cocoon only bins that I fed a mixture of grains. So let's see what that looks like. Looks like the European Nightcrawlers still have quite a bit of condensation in there, um, but the Red Wigglers, they kind of look like maybe the. The moisture seems to be, you know, evening out a little bit. So let's take a look. Let me make sure I know what I'm doing here. Red Wigglers, check. So let me take a look at them and see what they are up to. Looks like they're all throughout. I mean, I didn't put that food in any one particular place, so I wouldn't expect them to, to be in a worm ball or anything. But um, there's there's a lot of worms in here. I know somebody had commented on the last video, they're like, oh, well, if you had 500 worms, you know, or 500 cocoons, you know, shouldn't there be like 3,000 worms in here? Well, yes and no. They're not as big as red wigglers that are in a larger um, an area, so they won't get as large, but I, I really do think there are thousands of them in here. If you look at the, the density of every single handful, there is a lot of worms in here. I have no trouble saying there's a couple thousand of them in here. Um, they're at this density throughout the entire, you know, 10 gallon container. So there is quite a few of them in there. All right, I'm gonna just switch hands what, rather than going and washing my hands, make sure I don't cross contaminate them, but I'm gonna take a look at the euros. I'm just gonna use my other hand. Now, if you go back and look at my microscope series, I'm gonna try and remember to put that up there. The European Nightcrawlers, I did not, when I was looking at them hatching under the microscope, I did not see as many come out of a European Nightcrawler cocoon as I did the Red Wigglers um, or the Blue Worms. The, the Blue Worms and the Red Wigglers were kind of like clown cars. I mean, there was three and four of them sometimes coming out of the same cocoon. But the Europeans do tend to be quite a bit bigger. The egg, um, egg cocoons are bigger and the adults are bigger. So they're putting on some weight in here. They're getting a little bigger. Kind of trying to see if I find a cocoon. I mean, there has to be cocoons because I keep finding baby worms. But... Um, just not seeing them off the with the different colored paper that I use. Sometimes it they blend in a little too well. But it looks like they're doing just fine with that grain feeding that I gave them. And I do have a little bit left over. So that's I'm just gonna use up the rest of that. So I'm just gonna split it between the two bins and that's what they'll get for the week it already has the grit in it so no need to have a second addition there they've got more than enough bedding so no need for another addition of that hide the bag under there maybe it'll decompose for me and then switch hands kind of incorporate this so the moisture gets in there makes that grain available. I'll try and link to the other video where I fed them the grain because normally I do just feed them whatever household scraps that I have uh, but I just didn't have any because I'd been gone on vacation so I had to kind of make something. Don't normally do that. I mean kind of one of the reasons I do this is to manage my household waste and so I, I did kind of feel like that was going against my brand but you know they do have to still eat right? Got to do what you got to do. All right, well, that is just a quick update of how things went with the grain feeding with these guys. I hadn't done that before. And to check on them and see how they're doing after they were neglected for a couple of weeks. And 
that's just about it. So give me a thumbs up if you like the video and the series, and click subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And a um, little distraction here. Out, out. Where was I? Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.